Hello and welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. For this video, I want to explain a little bit about the cofunctional identities, what they are, and how you can use them to write trigonometric functions uh, as their appropriate cofunction. So let's first explain a little bit about some neat relationships that we have in a nice right triangle. Suppose you're looking at uh, this particular right triangle, and you need to find something like sine of theta. Now, using uh, what you know about sine, uh, you can find that value by taking the opposite side and putting it over the hypotenuse. So in this case, you get y over r. And one thing that I like to emphasize in a lot of my videos is that this value really depends on what angle you're looking at. So uh, let's go ahead and do another one. Let's go ahead and look at cosine of beta. That's my other angle. So we're looking at here at the upper right hand. And for cosine, we're thinking of the adjacent uh, over the hypotenuse. So in this case, y divided by r. Now, notice how in both these instances, even though I use different trig trigonometric functions and different uh, angles, I got the exact same value uh, or the exact same ratio for sides. This is not um, an accident. Uh, this is exactly what we're looking for when I mean by cofunction identities. Sine and cosine uh, will have the same value as long as their angles are complements of one another. So you can actually do this with a lot of other angles uh, and essentially get the same value. The way we make this a little bit more precise is we say, okay, suppose I want to find something like sine of the angle theta. That's really going to be the exact same value I'd get if I looked at cosine, oops, cosine, of 90 minus the value of my original angle. And you can see how this really works. This really is my angle beta up here because if this was say, um, I don't know, 30 degrees, this would have to be 90, uh, 30 and 60 add up to be 90. So sure enough, that would be my other one. So it's really saying that this angle has to be the complement to this one. And we need functions that are uh, co-functions of one another. So like sine and cosine. Now you can do this with all of your trigonometric functions, and this is where the cofunction identities come from. So sine is the cofunction of cosine, tangent is the cofunction of cotangent, and secant is the cofunction of cosecant. In fact, you can really hear it in its names, uh, so you can figure out which is connected with which. Now it's interesting to note that these cofunction identities do work the other direction. Uh, so if you want, you can say that cosine of 90 degrees minus theta is equal to sine. Cotangent of 90 minus theta is equal to tangent of theta and cosecant of theta or of cosecant of 90 minus theta is equal to secant. So let's play around with these identities and make sure we have the right idea um, and also see how you really can use this to write one function in terms of its cofunction. So the key for this is recognizing one, what is the proper cofunction and two, what is its complementary angle? So I want to rewrite sine of 62. Its cofunction is cosine. So I'll start off there. Now I need to make sure it's its complement. So I can take 90 minus 62, and that'll get me the proper complementary angle. This will be cosine of 28 degrees. All right, let's try another one. What is the cofunction of cosecant? Well, it's right in the name, it's secant. Get our complementary angle in there, so 90 minus 59. And this will give us secant of 31. All right, one more to go. Tangent's cofunction is cotangent. Complementary, 90 minus 13. So minus minus 13, 77. Cotangent of 77. So of course there's many uh, other identities, uh, but these are really neat uh, because at least you get some sort of clue about how things are connected really from the names of the functions themselves. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit MySecretMathTutor.com.